Alright guys, how's it going? Back again. For another Road running. I need to ride my CDLs. That's ironic because I was just talking to somebody about getting CDLs at work today. Uh, not sure what episode this is. I'm thinking it's about 86. But like I can always say, it'll be right when I get right. I'm gonna get it online. On my way to the northern, up north, to the Anderson, where my family's at. I'm going to spend some time with them, as always. Turn this light off, because y'all done seen me. I know what I look like. Really thought about starting to do these with, like, uh, just, like, voice recordings and putting, like, a picture with a video instead of just a video of me and what I'm doing because I'm really never doing nothing interesting. But uh, it's really about what I'm saying more than what I'm, what I'm doing. But yeah, so on my way up to the northern, it'll be a nice little, uh, nice little trip. I uh, figured I'd get caught back up, so I haven't made a video since Saturday, so this one is for Sunday, then I gotta do Monday, and then today is Tuesday, going into Wednesday, it's, it's Wednesday now, but uh, I gotta do a video for Tuesday, so I'm uh, technically behind three on the way to four, but that's okay, I'm just getting caught up, um, so for Sunday... <coughs> Sunday was a pretty, you know, regular day. Hold on, let me put my seatbelt on, because that's why this thing is beeping. Uh, Sunday was pretty laid back, chill. Uh, hung out with the with the kids. Uh, didn't have very much going on, really. Uh, resting. Well, no, no, no. Sunday. I'm tripping. I worked all weekend. Last weekend. Every day. Sunday, Sunday. Um, <clears throat> so, that's all there was to do this weekend. There's a lot of the reason why I didn't get these videos done on time. It's because I worked it all weekend and wasn't feeling like keeping myself up. I was literally on a roll of going to bed as soon as I got off. Um, this is the first day. I haven't just went to bed as soon as I got off since um, since Sunday. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with my medication. I took my medication on um, Saturday and Sunday. While I was at work, and it made work super easy, very smooth, very <clears throat> easy breezy. But uh, once I got off, like uh, I, it was harder for me to get sleep, slow my mind down. My thoughts are like super loud when I take my medication, so I have to like quiet them, I have to try really hard to quiet my thoughts, um, the, the negative part about Sunday was, um, so, um, something that I did at the end of my shift, or something that I was accused of doing. Um, 
got me, actually got me rolled up on Monday. So, that happened. It wasn't the best of news or experiences. Um, it was kind of shifted the dynamic of my relationship with my team lead. But, um... I'm going to stick to what I've been doing and stick to the things I've been saying about work, and that is work was work. Leave it at that. I'm not going to get any more in depth than that. I did want to pass on the information that I got wrote up, but uh, not in a negative way. I just wanted to make that something that I. Um, and that technically should be part of. The next episode, which is for Monday, because I didn't get rolled up on Sunday, I got rolled up on Monday. I made the mistake, or was accused of the mistake, on Sunday night after I left. And I got rolled up on Monday. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't define myself by those types of uh, situations. Uh, I think they just happen to everybody and it can happen to any of us at any time but um it was a learning experience I did learn to you know do things differently in a more successful way for my job and hopefully that um will prevent that from happening again and if I stay focused on it and make sure that um, you don't make the same mistakes uh, again because that'll just lead to more disciplinary action which I don't need but uh, I hope that uh, <coughs> I hope that um, I don't experience this very much more often because it's um, it's a lot on my conscience. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to try to be as good as I can, and things aren't showing that way, but um, that's circumstantial, mostly because, you know, I'm, I might be moving too fast or being distracted or just not always coming in to put my best foot forward, which is something that I need to focus more on, uh, if I'm being honest, and um, that's really all I can speak on as far as what's been going on at, at work. Um, in my personal life, uh, my feelings and emotions have, in the past three days, I'm going to have to describe them as um, very, hmm, best way I could describe what they've been like over the past three days would have to be dramatic. Um, and the reason why I say that my feelings and emotions have been dramatic is because I've been controlled a lot by anger, frustration, and attitudes that are unbecoming of myself, mostly because I'm allowing these negative influences and, and personalities to lay waste on an otherwise peaceful mindset. Um, the majority of it has came from one source one source for which I have removed from my ability to communicate. 
purposely because uh, some people you just have to stop trying to find common ground with and just allow the separation to do what it needs to do and um, it's very difficult when that person is someone who you co-parent with but it's even more difficult when it's two people that you co-parent with and um, that makes it very hard but I think it's for the best I don't think it will reflect or have a huge impact on my relationship with my children uh, because my relationship with them has been quite stable from the time they were born until now and I don't think these little mishaps or misunderstandings are going to affect that but I do think that it will affect the communication that I allow to continue with a couple of their mothers. Um, it makes me really upset to think that, you know, as one of the two people who is the most responsible for the well-being of this child, it seems at times the most difficult to work with the other parent in order to find common ground for the well-being of ourselves and uh, sometimes you just have to accept that as being the case and move on you know some people and different environments are going to hold grudges and be upset and have animosity towards you because of where you're trying to get to and where you are projecting your your attention and you can't really satisfy those people you really have to stop trying to please everyone but the thing that makes me the most upset is when I try to have these conversations with people about, you know, not just the betterment of my child's environments, but the betterment of my own, and how quickly they escalate to a blame game situation that ends up being just a dick swinging contest and it gets me nowhere it gets neither of us anywhere we just get upset stop talking and that's it that's really it like it, it doesn't really re-evolve from there um and it, it only it only makes the only person that suffers is our child because <laughs> We get further and further away from being able to <clears throat> put a good example of co-parenting in front of him. And that, that's what hurts me the most. Is how little ability um, there is for compromise and patience. But that, you know, that's not a one-way street. Understand that there are things that I'm guilty of that cause frustration and anguish. Um, I also am aware of my inability to communicate a lot of the time because of a high um, sense of anger and 
in turmoil. Like, I, once I'm upset, I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to be left alone. And usually that leads to not talking to someone for an extended period of time. But, um, that's not always healthy with, like, trying to regain communication. And then, and I called myself <clears throat> starting this year with a resolution <clears throat> of wanting to increase my personal ability to communicate with everybody and not shut down like I, I always do, you know, especially with the people I have children with. But, you know, I've gone out of my way to give these individuals respect and uh, a higher level of patience and for the most part it seems as though I have really just gotten a slap in the face you know I don't I don't raise my voice at these people I don't point my finger and blame them for things that they do that I don't like. I don't go out of my way to hurt their feelings, which are all things that I feel like have been done to me and are done to me. Each and every time I try to communicate with these people. And I'm getting to a point where, you know, I'm, I'm seeing my, I'm picturing my life better off with that door shut because you know I don't I don't leave the door open to offer anything to them you know I leave the door open to offer something to my child and I can't make them appreciate that nor can I make them feel the same way about what I'm trying to accomplish But at the end of the day, you know, it's like I have to remember what I've said to myself in the sense that I have to think about number one. I have to think about me, myself, my health, and things like that first because I'm not going to be able to offer anybody anything positive or productive or prosperous if I'm not in a good place and I haven't been and it's really sad how the conversations I have with these people often lead me to a very 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 negative mental state of mind and I think it's very ironic that I do that and I go there in my head because I think that some of my behavior in the past before it came to where it is now put them in that position at some point in time. I feel as though <clears throat> it's karma's way of finding itself back around for me to be feeling like overly upset, overly emotional about the hurtful things that these people tell me, you know, because I deliberately try to keep my accomplishments that I, that I have and that I do for my children between me and that child. Like, I'm not looking for a pat on the back or uh, kudos from their mother from the things I do. I just want to see a smile on my child's face. But if I don't <clears throat> broadcast my accomplishments to them, I'm giving them the impression that there's nothing that I do or nothing that has been done. 
for my child because I don't say anything to them about what I've done or what I do. It's all assumed that it comes from my mother. And that doesn't bother me as much as the attitude that these people have. I mean, it's it's to the point where now that I mean it's very difficult to admit and to speak like out into the open but it's got to the point where now that, you know, some of this turmoil has become so substantial to me that it almost sounds more feasible for me to sign my rights away and wash my hands with even attempting to help raise these children because it's like you're always going to play second to mom. And I, I, it's not that I have a huge issue with that. It's just that that sucks, you know. And not that it was supposed to be fair, but it sucks. It really does. It really sucks. But uh, I think over time I'll, I'll get better with that. I just think that right now I'm struggling with the impact the support is having on my finances right now and the effort to keep one's worth. So I've always been told in in the parenting realm by the by the custodial parent that uh I'm not the best at keeping my word. And I think that another way karma has found its way into the forefront of my mind is that the things that I've been told would happen for me in my benefit, in my on my from by them on my behalf so like the things that they tell me that they're going to do to help me um, have not been upkept either so I mean I guess that's what I get for making them feel like I didn't keep my word but it just sucks because there's a lot of attitude and a lot of personality that comes along with these people's responses to our conversations and I feel like a lot of it stems from like an underlying emotion that's like still living inside of their inside of their feelings that they haven't dealt with. And I know personally I don't hold like in the under underlying feelings or emotions with these people, I've cut ties as far as that goes, and definitely um, more happy where I am than where I was with them. And it re- it really makes it hard to want to be able to continue to interact with these people when. They make it so hard for you to want to support them and help them when they just bash you every chance they get. And I'm not going to say it's every chance they get. It's just like, you know, I, I could be approaching them at bad times in their life or maybe overly approaching them or just not 
something about what I'm doing is just rubbing them totally the wrong way. And we're, we're nowhere near on healthy wavelengths as we were in the past. Like in the past, things seemed a lot more transparent, a lot more uh, manageable. Now it seems like a lot of the conversations that we have um, feel like a it just makes me like it, it gives me to be honest it gives me very very violent thoughts and I don't like that I don't like thinking that these people upset me to the point that I want to cause them harm. I don't like that these people get me upset to the point that I, I visualize them being harmed, whether by me or otherwise, just to make me feel better. Um, I don't like to be that upset by, by anybody, but I have to get a... a more tighter hold on my anger and my emotions because it's up to me to uh, find, you know, a peace of mind through this anguish. And I have taken steps to request help through the court systems which hopefully will provide some uh, help on my behalf um, we'll see can't guarantee anything yet but uh, I also have a very big issue with uh, accepting threats um, and that's something that two of the five of my children's mothers like to like to do they like to threaten me in different ways, but nonetheless, that's just what they like to do. But, um, I don't want to harp on baby mamas because. <laughs> That's really all they are to me, it's just baby mamas, they're not anybody important. And uh, like I said before, it's much more about my children than it is about their mothers. As much as I would like to see them doing well, see them healthy, happy, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, it just doesn't always work out that way, especially when they have these hidden mixed agendas that they would wish me to be in, involved with, that I just can't, like, I just don't want to be involved with them anymore. And that can hurt, like, I'll be honest, if I was involved with someone that I really wanted to be involved with and they didn't want to be involved with me and they had made that clear over an extended period of time, I would probably have some animosity built up towards that person myself um, because I've, I've been there before. I've been in a situation where I like someone so much and the fact that they had no interest in me changed that attraction to um, animosity, and I mean, I still 
liked them because I was attracted to them, but I didn't like the fact that they didn't like me back. And I can honestly say, if that is the situation that they're going through, then I can understand why they are the way they are. But it's hard to understand how these emotions can be found because, I mean, I don't, I don't like lead them on or like try to antagonize that. I just, you know, I try to keep my distance and keep us separate. But it's unfortunate that the people that I feel like have these feelings towards me also have children by me. Which I also think can make it a little harder to not think about and to forget, you know, it's hard to forget somebody you have a child with. It's hard to ignore the fact that they have to be in your life for forever. And, uh, that gives you a little bit more depth into my personal situation, I guess, for now. But I'm gonna go ahead and sign out and probably get another video started here shortly and I will let you guys know more about the ins and outs when we reconvene as always thanks for watching thanks for tuning in adios